This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best way to make an amazing website. Hey guys, it's Max. In front of me, I have the brand new 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro. And I know a lot of you guys are wondering how well does it do for video editing? I've been getting messages, emails, and today we're gonna find out. We're gonna test it out with a variety of different codecs, some different benchmarks, and I'll let you guys know if it's worth buying this machine for your video editing needs. Now on the exterior, it really didn't change. They didn't change the display to 14 inches, make the bezel slimmer or anything else. It looks practically identical. They did give us a new updated keyboard. It's the magic keyboard as they call it. It has more key travel, it feels better, and most importantly, it's gonna be more reliable than the butterfly keys. Now, one thing they did change, which is great, is they effectively lower the price by up to $400. Now, in the past, this machine came with 256 gigs of uh, storage, eight gigs of RAM. Now, for the same price, you get 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of SSD. That would have cost you $400 to upgrade to that. I know a lot of guys would do that, especially on the storage side. That is excellent. Now, on top of that, if you want to get 32 gigs of RAM, that is now an option. It's $400 and you can go all the way up to a four terabyte SSD. The SSDs are very fast, but they are spendy. I think for most people, if you're buying a 13 inch, unless you know you're doing very long video editing projects in 4K, you're probably fine not getting 32 gigs of RAM, especially if you're using Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna go ahead and click the CPU benchmark. We're gonna get that started. And this model right here, the base is an i5 processor, 10th gen. They do have an i7 option, but it's not that much faster. So I personally wouldn't spend the money on it. Now, one thing that I wanna point out is that the base MacBook Pro for 2020 is still using the same processor as last year. So if you wanna see how the base model performs, I'll leave a link in the video description to the previous video I made about it. Here we go, we have our uh, results. Multi-core is at 4,400, a little higher than that, and single core is at 1,242. So the multi-core actually didn't go up by that much compared to last year, maybe roughly 10 to 15%, but the single core score went up by about 30%. That is a pretty good difference, and as it relates to video editing, that's gonna make a difference when you're loading up, say, audio files in Final Cut, it has to create those waveforms, or you have motion tracking software uh, from um, like say motion VFX, where it uses just one core, that is gonna speed up those kind of tasks. And now let's take a look at the graphics performance. I'm gonna run this metal test. One great thing that Apple did is that even the i5 option comes with the best graphics that Intel offers, the G7 graphics. And there we go, we have a score of over 10,000 metal score, 50 to 75% higher than previously. And that is gonna be making a difference in video editing. Now I'm running Cinebench R20, which is a rendering benchmark. What this rendering test really shows us is if you're doing, say, transcoding, it shows you how it's gonna perform and how much power it has to do that. And there we have it. We have a score of 1898 points. My previous run actually got 1911, so about 1900. And that's roughly 10, 15% more than before if you're maxing out the CPUs. Next, I wanted to run Blackmagic's raw speed test. Over 110 with the CPU, that is actually pretty good, and 87 frames per second with the graphics. So if you're gonna be using DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna wanna edit back 4K Blackmagic raw footage, even 4K 60 shouldn't be a problem at full resolution. Now let's go ahead and open up Final Cut Pro, and before I run some of these, tests and show you some real world playback and rendering speeds and how well this does, let me give a shout out to our sponsor, Squarespace. If you've been thinking about making your own website or updating your old one, now is the time and Squarespace is the best way to go. I've been recommending Squarespace for over five years now and that's because you can make a great looking website with literally no web making experience. It doesn't matter if you want a portfolio, a blog, e-commerce, or anything else, you just choose a template and you customize blocks of text and images. It's incredibly simple, affordable, and ours have been running flawlessly, bringing in new clients thanks to its built-in SEO tools. Why not give it a try? You can start a free two week trial with no credit card needed by going to squarespace.com slash maxy or by using the custom link down below. And when you're ready to launch, you will save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain.
I'm gonna go ahead and start out testing Bruce X. This is a little test designed for Final Cut Pro to test his rendering speed. You can download it yourself and then make sure to export as ProRes 422 and you guys can compare the results that I get with your system. Let's go ahead and hit start. It looks like it's moving along fairly quickly here. Okay, this is interesting. And done, that took 36 seconds. Not bad at all. Now, the last time I tested it, I think it took a minute and 12 seconds. So that is a big improvement. Now let's get into some actual footage. I wanted to start out with something a little bit more difficult. This is drone footage, uh, 4K 30 frames per sec. I know a lot of people complain about editing drone footage. So without any effects, it's playing back perfectly smoothly. No issues whatsoever. The CP is at 14%, graphics at 17 and let's go ahead and throw on a LUT as well. That makes it a lot more difficult. Bam, you guys saw that change. So here we have a bunch of corrections, saturation, highlights, shadows, midtones. We have the LUT applied. This is what a lot of people are gonna be doing, and this is that full 4K playback at the best quality, not the better performance. Not bad at all, definitely some improvements. And if you guys saw the video on the MacBook Air, it's just struggled. I told people, if you're gonna get the MacBook Air, even the new one, because of the cooling, just do it for 1080p, no more than that. Now I wanna do my standard 4K five minute test. It's a little bit more difficult. The footage is from a Sony camera, 30 frames per second, but I have some film grain applied and two LUTs. Let's see how it compares. We just hit 50% on the test, and I wanna point out something that I noticed, and that is that this thing is definitely running nice and quiet. We're at 76 degrees Celsius after five minutes of uh, doing this export, and the fans are at 3,600 RPM, or 38 right now, just went up a little bit. In this thing, I can barely hear it. The previous MacBook Pro was louder, and the MacBook Air that I recently tested was much, much louder and a lot slower. All right, and we are done. And that took nine minutes and 58 seconds, just under 10 minutes. That's roughly 20% faster than the last generation. Keep in mind, this is a five minute project. So uh, if you're doing a 20 minute project, 30 minute project, something that's more difficult, that's gonna be a bigger amount of time saved. And that's actually twice as fast, a little more than twice as fast as the quad core i5 MacBook Air that I just tested. Absolutely, you wanna get this MacBook Pro instead of the MacBook Air. Now, what I'm curious about is how is this MacBook Pro, this $1,800 model, gonna compare to the 16 inch MacBook Pro? Those, you can actually buy those on sale right now. I'll have a link down to Amazon and B&H where it's not that much more money. Of course, it is larger, it's heavier, but how much of a performance difference are we gonna see between them? If you guys wanna see that video, make sure you guys are subscribed and you guys enable the notifications down below. Now let's go ahead and do a couple other tests here. This is H.265 or HDVC footage. I actually have two LUTs applied and I have film grain applied. This is a, even more difficult than before and it looks to be fairly smooth. I'm seeing a little bit of skip frames if I'm looking back at the play, the playhead and the time code there. And I'm scrolling through a little bit of drop frames, but actually better than I expected without the film grain, even with two LUTs, now it's playing back perfectly smooth. So definitely better performance than before. Let's go ahead and export this and compare it. Okay, and that took just over five minutes compared to about eight minutes previously. And that just shows once again, uh, like I said in the previous test, if you're exporting and you care about speed, you should be exporting to H.265. YouTube supports it now. The file size is half of that with the same quality, so you can upload much faster. Uh, and as you guys saw, that took five minutes and it's a little more difficult instead of taking 10 minutes. If you have a half hour project, you're gonna save yourself a ton of time. Now, I usually don't do this, but let's plug in the SSD and I wanna test out some ProRes RAW on this system. Typically, I just leave that for the higher end laptops with dedicated graphics. This is 4K ProRes RAW, 24 frames per second from an FS5 Mark II, the external recorder. Have some color corrections, I have a LUT applied and it looks to be playing that back perfectly fine. Now ProRes RAW is more difficult than standard 4K ProRes and this is at the highest playback resolution. 
Um, it's not twice as hard. It's about 80% more difficult. If you're doing ProRes Raw, that kind of stuff, should you buy a 13 inch? Uh, I don't know. I think a lot of you guys are interested in a 13 inch because you want the smaller form factor. It's a lot more compact. So overall, that is nice and smooth. Definitely better than I expected. And overall, what do I think about this new MacBook Pro? Well, um, definitely it's not like a high end 16 inch and some of the other stuff I'm used to using, but we saw the performance differences. It's running a little bit cooler. You're getting 16 gigs of RAM out of the gate, a larger SSD. That is excellent. I know a lot of you guys like the smaller form factor. If you're traveling, it's just nicer to have something that's more compact. So if you're one of those people, there's been never been a better time to buy a 13 inch MacBook Pro. I'll have links down in the video description where you guys can get some great deals. If you guys need a website, definitely go check out Squarespace. Give them a try. There's no risk involved, no credit card needed. And they've been supporting the channel for a long time. I definitely appreciate that. And let me know your guys' thoughts on these new MacBook Pros. This has been Max, and I will see you guys in the next video.